Last year, players of the video game Folded made a scientific breakthrough. They solved for the shape of a protein related to AIDS in rhesus monkeys. Scientists had been working on this problem for 10 years, and the gamers solved it using the power of play in just three weeks. So I'm going to tell you a bit about the power of play and where I think it's headed as we find more ways for play and games to impact the future of science and health. So I've been a gamer pretty much all my life. I went from being completely addicted to Super Mario Brothers as a young kid to designing and creating games. And what fascinates me about games is their power to unlock the human imagination in all kinds of unexpected ways. So as a graduate student in computer science, when I had the opportunity to work on a game, I began to think about the possibility of a new kind of game and a way to show the power of games to change the world, which sounds like a really tall order until you consider the power of play. Well, what makes play so powerful? Play is a space where people can be free to experiment, to dream, and to be daring without fear of failing. We're more willing to try new and seemingly crazy ideas when we're not quite as concerned with the outcome. And problems can be solved by people going out and finding something that really intrigues them and gets their subconscious working. These days, play increasingly manifests itself in the form of video games, and video games are all about solving problems. But until now, the game designers have been making up those problems. So how could we use video games to solve real-world problems? At the University of Washington, we started with the principle that a really good way to solve challenging problems is to take the best of what both humans and computers are capable of. And so as technology advances, one of the key advantages that humans have over computers is creativity. So when we try to solve problems, we should let people think creatively about solving them and look at things in new ways that they haven't been seen before. And we know that we can let the computers handle the number crunching. So we designed a game around this approach focused on solving a scientific riddle. That riddle is understanding the shapes that proteins take. Now, proteins are molecules that are fundamental to life, and understanding them can lead to things like new vaccines, disease inhibitors, biomaterials, and more. But it turns out it's actually quite difficult to figure out the shape that a protein takes, even with things like lab experiments and vast networks of computers. But because it's all about the shapes and how they fit together, we thought that people and their brain power might be able to help. So this is the game, Fold It. We designed it to try out a whole new approach to understanding proteins by engaging the game players and their problem solving and creativity. The players directly manipulate protein shapes on their computers, and they compete and collaborate to try to find a high score by finding the best protein shape. And now the game has had hundreds of thousands of players from all over the world who have been able to produce some really amazing results. As I mentioned at the start of the talk, the players were able to solve for a protein shape that biochemists had been working on for 10 years. Since then, we've also seen that the players are able to develop cutting-edge biochemistry algorithms and in some cases teach their strategies back to the computer. And more recently, the players have actually worked with scientists to design an entirely new synthetic protein more efficient than the scientists had before. But I believe that these kinds of results are not the exception, and that play and games are something that everyone should factor into their plan for the future of science and health. Even now, we're letting the folded players design new inhibitors for the flu virus, and we're working on developing entirely new games that will impact health by letting players create disease-fighting nanomachines, and to verify the software of medical devices. Because the really exciting thing now is that play itself is changing to become more powerful. So how will the power of play and games change problem solving in the future? Well, one opportunity that's only recently been available is social play on a mass scale. Folded has had hundreds of thousands of players, but if we look at Facebook, it has over 600 million users. And the game Angry Birds has been downloaded 500 million times. So think about what could be possible with all this additional brain power. We could see a real proliferation of games for solving all kinds of different scientific and medical problems. And people who might have thought that they wouldn't be able to get involved and, and contribute will actually have an opportunity to make an impact. With all of these people engaged in play, 
I think we'd see a change in the structures of medical problem solving and discovery with game communities that are like huge worldwide research labs where interesting ideas and solutions can be generated and prioritized for further analysis and consideration and a real open scientific process and a way to locate skill and talent out in the crowd. As games get easier to make, all of these people will not just be playing games, but they'll also be creating them. And just as it's become easy for everyone to create and share their photos, their writings, and their videos, the same will eventually become true with games. And individuals and communities could create games that are relevant to them and their specific problem or health concern. So you won't have to wait for someone else to make the game that you're interested in. You'll be able to make it yourself. But I think the most exciting thing about the changing nature of play is that we can't really predict what's going to happen due to the emergent properties of play and of bringing everyone together in a real creative space. One of our lofty goals at the beginning of the Folded project was to try to make a game such that someone could win a Nobel Prize just by playing it. Now, earlier I mentioned a synthetic protein that the Folded players helped to design, and it turns out that the discovery and study of that reaction actually won the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1950. So this lofty goal of ours may not be too far from reality, which is something that I never would have imagined as a kid playing Super Mario Brothers. Thank you.